Hi, everyone. How are we? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is that you may be tuning in from. So listen, many of you have asked, when is the jury for the Waukesha parade attack going to speak? And the response to that mostly is everybody kind of thinking, well, is it the appeal process that's going on? Is that what it is? And then some people think, well, no, you know, maybe they made a pack with each other that it just wasn't something that needed to be put out there. Um, the trial already had way too much publicity. Well, in one of my previous live streams, I had shown this video that I found where one of the jurors did actually speak to some media. And it was part of a compilation that they had done. It was News 23. So I just took the pieces from the Waukesha Parade juror and uh, put this together for you. And if you want to see the whole thing, uh, I'll put the link in the description below for their full news report on this because it was interesting. The whole thing was interesting because they spoke about other cases as well. So here it is, guys. And like Groundhog Day, where every single day you go in and you repeat November 23rd. And in part one of an I-Team investigation, 23 News had the rare opportunity to talk exclusively to a juror from not one, but arguably the two most high profile murder trials in the region this past year. Many consider it the ultimate civic duty. Once I realized the impact that this was gonna have on the community, I kind of wanted to serve. We the jury find the defendant. But it also comes with the ultimate responsibility. From the biggest trial in the state line in 2022. Your life is not on the line, mine is. To the biggest in the Midwest. You have the power to nullify any law that you don't agree with. Waukesha Parade murder suspect Daryl Brooks defended himself, which made it an incredible experience for Scott as juror number six. I didn't have any expectations, so, you know, being my first time, this could have been normal, but it, you could tell it wasn't normal. You don't know what I'm Somebody trying to do. the jury out, I'm not going to argue with you. They, they so. don't. The strange happenings began even before the trial did, when each side had 10 strikes to whittle the jury down to 12 plus two alternates. He wanted to strike all 24 of us, and he ended up moving to a different courtroom, and they pulled out a bingo wheel, and they just randomly selected 10 people for his strikes. Scott said Judge Jennifer Doro did a phenomenal job of keeping the courtroom in as much order as possible. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. It's frankly, it makes me scared. I felt bad for her because, you know, he just went rogue and did whatever he wanted and wasn't about to, to listen. And it was a this power struggle. The jury was sequestered during deliberations, which went about three hours over two days before convicting Brooks on all 76 counts, including six counts of first degree intentional homicide. Everybody agreed it was it was pretty straightforward. Both Scott and Tess said one of the hardest things about serving on a jury was not being able to talk about the case to anyone until closing arguments were made. To finally get into that deliberation room and finally getting to release the feelings that you have pent up over the last four or five weeks to be able to actually talk about it. And that was, that was a great relief. So the free times when they couldn't discuss the case involve conversations about family, life dreams, and personal triumphs and tribulations. We developed a lot of great bonds, a lot of inside jokes, and we have a little contact group and we still keep in contact today. Both Tess and Scott said they were part of a diverse jury ranging in age from the mid 20s to the mid 70s. Okay, so there you go. Can you imagine the in the Daryl Brooks trial, how many times that these jurors looked at each other and had to speak with their eyes? I mean, it was okay. So, like for instance, they're on their way back into the to the courtroom, and all of a sudden, the bailiff or the guy, whatever they call him, bailiff, he comes over and goes, "Oh, we got to turn back around and go back out," <laughs> or "Please be seated." Okay, y'all got to leave again. <laughs> I mean, it was probably it was probably frustrating from their standpoint that they were like, wait a minute, we want to see what happens too. But um, it's obvious from just what he says. And we kind of knew that it was obvious. They weren't 
they were like, this guy is hurting himself. He's, he might as well be on the prosecution side. So I found that very interesting. And this particular news I team investigates thing, they are actually the next one that they did after this was talking to an attorney um, in regards to finding jurors um, in this day and age where there's so much media and uh, social media going on about true crime. And so I thought that was interesting. So if you want to watch that again, I'm putting the link below to part one, which is where I got this, these clips from. And then uh, you can find part two from there. So thank you, News 23. And thank you guys for being here this morning. Just a really quick one. Thought it was worth it. A lot of people were asking about jury speaking out, the juror speaking out in this case. And let's hope that this isn't the last we hear from them. I just feel like we're going to get something else. We're going to get a documentary. It's probably going to be a big documentary. I just, I, I, I just feel it in my bones. I mean, come on. We're talking about movie producers who just are probably drooling over this case. They've been working on it since they first saw him act up in court. So we'll see what happens. Let's just uh, also hope that he doesn't get any money from any of it. And it all goes to the victims. So and those in Waukesha who need it mentally and physically. Y'all be good. I'm going to put some more stuff out later on maybe today and tomorrow and then the following day. So stick with me. Hit that like button. Click that subscribe bell. Wait, no. Click the subscribe button. Hit the live bell. And please hit the like button if you don't mind. And uh, just say hello in the comments below. It helps the al algorithm and it helps other people that are interested in this trial find me. I've had so many new people that have found me recently and they said, where have you been? We didn't even know you were here. And we thought we found every YouTuber out there that was commentating on, on it, but you know, we didn't know you were here. So if you would please do that, I would appreciate it. Thanks you guys. Have a blessed day.